Well, good morning and welcome to Noah's Window. Mary Allison, I've shared time and time again, I know that uh, we read through the one year Bible and there's always an Old Testament selection, New Testament selection, and then the Psalms and maybe a couple of verses out of Proverbs. So oftentimes when we bring something to you, it has to do with what we've been reading in the Bible. And recently we went through Psalm 69 and, and there was a couple of verses in this, actually two or three verses in this Psalm that really spoke to me uh, about what's going on in our world today. You know, Mary Alice, um, you and I both know that in the Christian community, let's just say in the last decade, especially there have been a lot of high profile failures Absolutely. and a lot of uh, pastors of mega churches, a lot of leaders of Christian organizations, um, perhaps one of the, I, I always regarded him as one of the greatest Christian apologetics mm -hmm. uh, persons. And yet we're seeing individuals who are at, at the elevated position of respect fall. And then of course, what happens at that point is the world looks at them and us and laughs and says, it's all a fraud. And, and mm -hmm. we can see that Satan certainly gets what he wants out of that. Absolutely. Um, we could talk about that. There are a whole lot of things we could talk about. Maybe those things deserve discussions in some format someday. But what I want to point out in Psalm 69 is a prayer. And this is a prayer that we might not normally think of praying. But, you know, as Christ followers today, we want our lives, we're not perfect, but we want our lives to be such that we don't cause others to say, well, if that's what Christianity is, I don't want to be part of it. David prays a prayer in the Psalms to keep him from having that happen in his life. So I want to read this to you and then uh, to, and to all of us on, on Noah's window today. Uh, this is in verse 5 of Psalm 69. With <laughs> this first line, I could sure pray this. Oh God, you know how foolish I am. <laughs> you know, that, that's like David saying, okay, I'll be real clear on who God is and who I am. God, you know how foolish I am. My sins cannot be hidden from you. But here's the prayer in verse six. Don't let those who trust in you be ashamed because of me. Mm. I just, I love that prayer. I think it's so great, not just for Christian leaders of mega churches, although it's certainly good for me. I think it's good for every Christ follower who's watched every day. You know, I mean, that is true. I mean, all of us get watched, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and that's a, a, a tall challenge. You know, like you say, we know we can't be perfect, yeah. but we want to walk uh, carefully and cautiously knowing that as a Christian and as we represent the Lord, that people are watching us and we, we are here as his representative. That goes back to the ambassadorship. So an ambassador who represents the United States Whatever they do, however they conduct themselves, we get we get the the blame. Yeah, that it's a, they are they are representing our country. So what they do um, is a reflection on us. You know what I'm about to describe isn't something that's part of like our new spring culture, but what I'm going to talk about is a little bit of part of the culture that probably we both grew up in. There was the idea back in the day that if you are a Christian. People are watching you, so you need to be careful just to make sure that you don't do anything in your, you know, in your life or testimony that looks bad. And, and now I think on surface, that's true. But I think the thing that got communicated sometimes is you have to be really careful when people are watching. When they're you. watching, yeah. You know, I, I grew up a pastor's son, and, mm -hmm. and in those days, uh, pastor's kids lived in, I mean, pastor's whole family lived in a glass house. And so time and time again, I was told, you know, your dad is a pastor, you need to, to do X, Y, or Z. And, and I don't regret that. And I, I in fact, I kind of understand it. But there's a lot of difference between, hey, when people are watching, you better be sure that you're watching your P's and Q's. A lot of difference between that and David saying, don't let those who trust in you be ashamed because of me. I mean, mm -hmm. to me, that's a, David's praying a prayer about his insides. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about what's go, what he's doing on the outside, but he is saying, oh God, help me stay straight. Help me be legitimately who I'm supposed to be in your side. I know that's kind of being confusing. authentic in your heart because everything that we do on the outside starts in our heart. And you've talked about that before. It, it starts as a thought mm -hmm. and thoughts become uh, actions and attitudes. Thoughts become attitudes and attitudes become actions. And so 
it's all about the heart and that's where we need you know there's another uh, i think it's in the song that says guard your heart and that's that's where everything is the most important it's the source and it's the real one the real person and it's like you said and you and i've known a lot of people who were really good at creating a facade yeah and that but that is well never... that's what's happened with these leaders mm -hmm. they were good at creating facades and i don't i don't mean by that that they were fakes i believe that a number of these guys were were gifted of God and, and called of God, but they had like two levels of mm -hmm. life, you know, one for public consumption and one, you know, where they really were. And, and ultimately that bubbled up and, and broke through. It will always will, won't it? it well, I, I know, and, and you're to be credited uh, highly for this because, you know, obviously when it came to raising our boys, you, you the, 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 the larger load fell on you than on me. But I, I watched you, and of course, obviously, in the early days of our ministry, we, we lived in a glass house. And mm -hmm. but you were always telling the boys, "It's your heart. It's your heart. It's mm -hmm. your heart." You know that matters. And, the, and and that is it. And here's the thing: we just want our heart to be right with God, and that's one of the reasons we should have a time of prayer and Bible study every day because that sets our heart in tune with God to begin the day. Yeah. I don't know when David prayed this prayer. I, I don't know what stage of his life. I don't know if this was before the episode with Bathsheba or if it was after. I do know this. If it was before the episode with Bathsheba, there was a day when he quit praying this prayer. Mm. And if it was after, it was because he learned the damage that could be done, mm. you know, by doing this. So, so that's just a great, um, that's just a great word for all of us just to pray this prayer. Oh God, let's read it one more time. Don't let those who trust in you be ashamed because of me. I think I want to pray that prayer every day of my life. I want my life to be such that um, even though everyone knows I'm not perfect and, and I try to even communicate that at New Spring, I, I, I want my life to, to count for the Lord in a, in, a, in a very legit way. And that's a great prayer to pray. It is. Mary Alice, why don't you pray for us today? Okay, let's pray. Oh, Father, we do want to be humble before you, and we want to be real, and we want to be, um, we want to be who you want us to be so that we won't bring any shame on you and on your name and on your family. And we know that Satan wants to take us down, each and every one of us. And I just pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit would fill us and protect us and that you would uh, guard us as you instructed us to pray this prayer, to keep the evil one away, yes. because she's the one who is setting all these traps. And I just pray, Father... And, and uh, your foreknowledge, you know what's ahead of us. And I just pray that you would guide us a, away from the evil one, that you would steer us around his traps and his deceptions and help us to have a pure heart towards you and a humble heart towards you. And uh, we want to honor you, Lord, because we love you. And thank you for all your many, many blessings. For each and every one that's watching or listening to Noah's Window today, I pray blessings on their family. And please guide them today in their lives, whatever decisions are to be made, whatever needs there are that are heavy in their life, I just pray that you would step in, that you would uh, show yourself strong and powerful, that you would give wisdom and guidance and provision where it's needed. And we'll give you all the glory and the praise. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us today on Noah's Window. Mary Alice and I are taping this on uh, Wednesday afternoon. And I gotta let you know that I just was sharing with Mary Alice uh, the message that I plan to be bringing this weekend uh, in our Clash of Dynasty, uh, Clash 3. Uh, it's I've been praying about this message for weeks. In fact, I think the last two hours before I got out of bed today, I was just praying that God would guide me. I really believe this is a message for our times as much as anything that God has ever given me in uh, all my 45 years of pastoring. I just feel like this message is for our times. It's very heavy on me, and yet I think it's one of the most important things that we'll ever talk about. So I hope you're there this weekend, and on top of that, that you'll be praying for, for me as I get ready to bring this message. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Noah's Window, and I pray you have a wonderful day.